long tournament. No, it's not. It's just in fucking 15 minute parts. Oh, it's nice and wide. We got some shit on the right hand side. Look at this. This is third strike. We don't, unfortunately, run across second impact videos very often. Look at that punish. That was pretty much picture perfect. He should have cancelled it. He got like a two hit stand strong, but it was way better to get a one hit stand strong and just chicken from there. This aura is pretty good. I like the way he's moving a lot. This is a pretty, this is a pretty free matchup, honestly. Like it's like a comfortable like 7.5, like 2.5, maybe an 8 2. This is like really good for aura. Even like uh, Kuroda put it is a pretty shitty matchup. So Oro kind of gets to be really free form in this matchup. He kind of doesn't have to care very much. You know what I mean? He can be creative, and it doesn't hurt him that badly. But, is that a taunt? You still have to be kind of careful because Q Super 2 still instantly kills you. Ooh, neat. Yeah, he got the full conversion. That was perfect. That was max damage. Oh, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. ouch. He should have got some taunts up. After the dash punch, you're guaranteed at least one taunt. Kind of hard for Q to punish that. It's not, but he won't have charge. So he has to react to what is about to happen. You have to react to whether Aura bounces off or not. That's kind of cute. That was a nice little setup. He got the unblockable too. And then he did the Crota setup. This Aura is killing it! This is actually like some highly technical stuff. That was some hot shit, dude. That was some really good aura play. Uh oh, we got a twin. So that was like a matchup where aura kind of dominates. It really played like not do dissimilarly from Kuroda aura. Kuroda aura is more passive though, generally. Kuroda aura is probably his least passive character, but it's still very passive. He plays passive as fuck with Q, he plays passive as fuck with um, Akuma, he plays passive as fuck with uh, Hugo, and then he plays incredibly fucking passive with every other character, like even more than all those. His aura is like vaguely active, which is funny because aura is actually one of the most passive characters in the game. That was nice, he's probably going to kill off this. That was like the right decision. What's with these shorts? It's technically good to not kill your opponent until the follow-up combo of the super. Yeah, those two characters kind of like you know he, you've got to choose your fucking instances because they're in, they're like their main strength to the high level players is just how much fucking damage they get off of parries, which is probably the highest of any two characters, not counting Aura on his touch of death. All right, this is big. He could have canceled immediately, but he was being safe. I was walking low parry. That was nice. He got one hit only. He could have done some really cool stuff with that, but he didn't react in time. Shoulder is so bullshit. He parried low forward and did his own stand forward, and shoulder low profiled it from the, its fucking startup frames. I can't believe Yon didn't do anti air stand medium kick there. There's basically no risk to that. Even if you get parried, you can just mash more moves. You know how if you get parried in third strike, you can still cancel? Yon can still cancel his Ganajin moves if he gets parried. So there are very, very few things that can truly... Like, most parries don't actually get you anything guaranteed against Gen Agent Yun. You have to parry, like, very, very specific things. Like, if you parry a shoulder or if you parry a dash punch, they're unsafe. You can, like, get shoulders, two parries, and you can get a guaranteed, like, throw. Or, like, punish. If it's, like, a fast punish. Um, oh, yeah, Makoto Super 2 is strong as fuck. Um... Dash punch is three punt parries, and if you parry it, you get a big punish. This is free play. Give me the real set. Oh, Alex versus Hugo. WrestleMania 3. Love that win pose. I mean, start pose. Alex is so cool in this game, as a car throw. Back Fierce, that's unparryable. He was catching the Hugo who was fishing for the parry. Back Fierce is unsafe, but Hugo can't punish it super hard from far out, so it wasn't super risky. That's safe. All versions of Flash Chopper are actually safe. That looked like an SPD, but Alex got his throw off first. Alex gets a combo there. He missed it. It looked good. It looked like he did light knee, but heavy knee might have been better there. 
but EX would have guaranteed. Alex is getting, yeah, all these plays right. Universal overhead is actually airborne and will jump over throws and um, lows. Universal low crush, universal throw crush. That was nice. All that's done. Alex has most of his stuff has zero momentum in this game but his damage and stun are quite high but like when you land an overhead you're back to neutral if you land a command grab you're back to neutral if you land um, like a EX chop you're back to neutral if you land it towards like a throw you're back to neutral Alex is like okay neutral. It's definitely his weakest feature. He can't do a lot of really basic things. Like he basically can't come off a low. His ticks are really good. His damage and stun are very high. He's a new character archetype that basically didn't exist. As a kind of like a kind of a, a, a I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a, a have command grab character. He's got a command grab, but then he's got like really good mobility. But then he has just that zero momentum and like very little combo opportunity. That's max damage, I think. Technically speaking, max damage will stand 40x drop into super. Yeah, semi grab player is close. They were kind of playing around with like a new character archetype. Yeah, slow tier. But what ended up happening is that Alex feels like he has a bunch of tools with no fucking connection to each other. Like, generally speaking, um, what they traditionally did was they gave a character some tool that they were themed around, and then a bunch of other tools that just caught the escapes to that initial tool. Like, you can see that with Guile and his Sonic Boom. It's like, here's my Sonic Boom that I can spam, and then here's like 20 ways that I can hit people who are trying to get out of the way of my Sonic Boom. Or like Zangief, here's my command grab that I can spam, and here's a bunch of options that stop people from getting out of the command grab. That was like the design philosophy for the most part in like early Street Fighter. And I guess even modern Street Fighter. But um, it's still maintained for all of those characters, I mean. But the thing about uh, Alex is that like his command grab doesn't really make his other tools work. His overhead doesn't really make his other tools work. There's like a lot of redundancy. He has like 20 reasons to blow up people who are blocking low and then like fucking no reason to make people block low. You know what I mean? Crush Fierce is a pretty shitty button. You cancel straight to Lariat. He might have been able, that was like a pretty deep universe overhead. He might have been able to link the super. Oof, this hurts. He's not dead though, I don't think. Q has kind of a lot of health. Oh, he went straight for it. You can confirm that. That is a confirm. Dash punch into super. He just didn't get it. He got a false. False hit confirm. The slaps. Those are quite not too unsafe against Hugo, I don't think. He might be able to punish him with like stand strong if, well, we just saw it there, but that was a bunch of hit swift. Or like low strong, depending on the range. Certain characters have to red prey the last slap, which is basically a zero risk play. You don't take that much damage if you eat a slap. Get him? Nope. So characters have to red parry the last slap if they want to get a punish. But slaps give you enough time to see what you're like, w where the timing would be. And also they don't knock down or do any damage if you get hit by just the last one, so the red parry is not super risky. And it's like a 3 frame window, so you know. I almost never go for red parries like that, but I don't... It would help a lot. Like that, Aura would actually really benefit, because Aura gets Severn House on every slap, but he can get Launcher on a slap if he get red parries last hit. 
but like I've never needed to learn that because that matchup is really easy. I've never played a Q who like convinced me that that was my path to victory. This matchup is surprisingly fair. This is probably 6-4 in, in Yon's favor, or maybe even even. Might be a 5-5. Five five. Hugo's tools work kind of well here. His claps are pretty good. His buttons give Yon kind of a hard time approaching. Um, he doesn't really mind if Yon rushes him down. He's just as weak to Ganagian as everyone else in the game. Minor exception, he has a one-frame command grab. And he can kill Yon in literally four SPDs. Like, I'm not even joking. Four SPDs will kill Yon. Oh no, so medium kick into everything. Or that. Wave from the land. Did a low short confirm. I think the confirm I think the launcher that most Yuns use, it's kind of hard for me to tell because I just see it, I never do it. But it seems to be a bunch of low shorts, and if they're hitting, it's uh stand strong into towards fierce. I think. It might be stand fierce towards fierce, rather. I'm not actually sure. Yun's cheap dude. He's doing the absolute baby combo. This combo does absolutely no damage at all. But it is undroppable. An infant could do that combo. The medium shoulders have zero precision to them. Like, you can do them really early or really late, and it gives you, like, a similar launch. Reset. It's a command grab. Very, very well-spaced universal overhead. He had the really easy setup for that. It was just forward dash into universal overhead. Unfortunately, Hugo can't really do anything after a media universal overhead. Hugo has basically, oh no, no options after a, um... He has basically no combo options that don't involve a clap starter. He has basically no combo options in general. That was a pretty cool ender. You have two main concerns with your ender. Um... One is the meter build on your next Gane, and the other one is leaving the opponent in the corner. That's a very common tactic on high-level play. Not common, but like... Yuns don't usually use the X meter at all if they can help it. But it's very common... If, if, if Yun uses any X meter at all, oftentimes it'll be a dive kick just in front of the opponent's face and then an EX up kick. That's like pretty risky. But it'll blow up like a parry attempt, it'll blow up like a... Um, a defensive tech, it'll blow up most buttons. Yun's EX upkick has invincibility. Like a decent amount of it. I think it's actually like truly invincible until it hits. Irian. That was nice. Irian's got a kind of nice little thing where if he gets an ATR parry, he doesn't really care if he hits the opponent grounded or airborne. He cares a little bit, because his launcher is JP3 on airborne connect and JP2 on grounded connect. But like most characters have to kind of wait for the opponent to land to get their big punishes, and then there's a very small window of that. Like two frames. And that two frames will move based on how high the opponent is when you parried them. And sometimes it won't exist at all if they were close enough to the ground. Or far enough away from the ground, actually. Because if you, you'll restore trip guard if you get parried and then enough time passes. Anyway, Yurian can, he doesn't care if the opponent hits the ground. He can just do like anti-air tackle if he has the partition, or if he doesn't have the partition, he can do, um, uh, just crouch fierce. And then he gets big combos no matter what. See that? He'd like parried, then he walked in. He was looking for walk in into back throw. Which bounces Yun into the mirror, I think. It's like a third uh, Street Fighter Five combo. Yurian can situationally combo out of... Oh, wow! This should kill if he does it right, which he didn't. That was kind of weird that Yun didn't even need the mirror. I think he's supposed to get hit by one hit of that. Oh, nice. Tackle fierce? Yep. Two tackles was just introducing a possibility of failure there. Fierce was an easy ender.
キッチンが怖いさあこれ肘かくるプロですからさあ切り返す See how that punish window didn't exist at all for that low forward because he attacked kind of late in his jump. That was like a safe. It wasn't a safe jump in. But it couldn't be punished like that. I don't think. Jump ins are not super risky. Nice parry, nice punish. It's kind of scary to do something like that. He did low parry into. Nice mirror. He hit shoulder for the chip. That was a low short. Like even if even if uh, Yuri and parried that, his optimal punish was going to be something like uh, low forward. God damn it! I wish this playlist was oriented the other way. It's set from most to least recent, so it always plays the wrong order. I don't know if there's a way to change that through YouTube. Is this an actual match? Yeah, no, free play. Don't care about no free play. Good old Chun. Is my chat frozen again? It hasn't moved in forever. It's been five minutes. Maybe people are just chilling. Nope. The fact that it happened once makes me phobic about it. I'm streaming at like a reasonable hour for the first time. Ah. <laughs> that was cool. The cancels into Hazanchu are really risky. Some don't pull them out that much. It's like not a super good mix up. It's a better mallet smash. But not being two hits kind of hurts it. It's worse. Mount Smash does more damage and stun. And it's two hits, which makes it marginally harder to parry. But it, Mount Smash is slower, which is a big issue. Mount Smash also has a much, 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 much better EX version. EX Asanchu is one of the worst moves in this whole game. It's like almost as bad as the fucking Hazanchu Super. Which is questionably the worst Super in this game. The actual worst, worst super in this game is probably Blue Nocturne. With the down towards hard kick over a fireball and then jab. MLG plays. He probably should have died for that. I guarantee that that was a failed super. He probably just wanted to super through a fireball. Chun-Li's super is actually really good at punishing Hadoukens. It was like a really, really bad fireball to throw. X copy is also one of the worst supers in the game, but on the plus side, it makes you not 12 anymore, which is kind of good. Being the opponent's character and having better damage than the opponent are both okay, provided that you actually are like as good a player of the opponent's character as the opponent is, which you probably aren't because you're a 12 main. Um, and also, you have no EX and no super, which are you know your entire goals. And also, you have this huge punish window. The thing about Blue Nocturne, that's like the only viable way to use it, what you just said. Is red parry a hit or just blue parry a hit? And then, not all attacks are multi hit, that's the problem. In fact, most of the parries you get are going to be on single hit attacks. Not only that, but like, if you parry something, you can already punish it generally. Blue Nocturne is pretty bad. At least the meter is like kind of short. He tries to chase it and then grab it. I like that. That was MC Jump Stomp. He was trying to meme. That's really, really hard to get out of. Chun-Li can keep that like going for like 40 hits. So you just gotta get like 40 parries. 40 parries isn't super hard, but you know. The chances of not fucking up even a little bit with your rhythm. And the chances of recognizing when it's over. I like that little setup. If you knock someone over with a stomp, then they don't quick stand. Which, I don't remember if you can in this game. You can crutch fierce onto their other side. Which is kind of hard to react to, and also helps you get the corner sometimes. He did it to preserve the corner when he did it just now. Neat. Suddenly has an air TC. Or not a TC, she's got an air, like, command normal. Down towards fierce, or down back fierce. That slams the opponent into the ground. 
And it does pretty good damage too. Normally you don't want to do that. Um, or normally it's not that, it doesn't have that good of a hitbox. But the thing is, her stomp puts the opponent... If you get like an air to air stomp, it puts the opponent in the perfect place that the down towards fierce can hit. And then slam the opponent down. It's a pretty cool little combo. The really neat technical parts of Chun-Li are mostly lost because um, the really, like, oh, that was the low target combo. Because of the really scummy parts of Chun-Li that are, like, you know, so centralizing. Like, Chun-Li's ability to combo super off of low forward or car throw the opponent is, like, 99% of her game. So it doesn't really matter if you don't know that well about, like, stomp combos. Because they don't matter. Neat. This will kill. No, it won't. This won't kill. It's Alex. Alex has lots of health. Ooh, good confirm. This will probably kill. Depends on the taunts. Nope. Q is pretty fucking strong. Alex's health is like high, but it's not that high. Is he seems like he'd be a grappler, so he'd have like shit tons of health. But I'm pretty sure his health is literally just the same as Ryu, which granted is kind of high. Shoto health is well above average in this game because there are a lot of characters with low health, and also there's two average healths. There's like a there's like a 1,000 equivalent and like a 1050 equivalent, and Shoto's are like the 1050. Stomp is not one frame airborne. Alex has no escape. You can't escape, etc. Stomp might be unthrowable. I don't know. Rather, what happens is you might get pre-jump frames by holding up and then cancel the pre-jump frames into a stomp before you jump, since it is a charge move. I don't know. I feel like I've had Alex's successfully stomp through my meaty throw. But it definitely won't get you out of, like, like unblockables and stuff. No, I don't think he does. Pretty sure he doesn't. Oh my god. The half circle back kick. That button is pretty bad. That's probably the single worst special move in this whole game. Remember how I said Alex has a lot of redundancies in his tool set? That move is literally fully outclassed by his command grab. For whatever reason, this footage has no names. Wow. Empty jump super. Caught something. Echo's kick overhead is not even that bad. It's probably worse than his punch overhead in most instances. But I've seen a real spiral DDT. I thought it was just a meme move, but it's based on a real wrestling move. They're pretty flashy. It's one of those moves that you would never ever... It's one of those moves that's not like a real martial art kind of move, if you know what I mean. But, um... I don't know. It's very showy. The thing is, okay, Max, there is a reason. Um, it's that uh, having different animations of an overhead just makes it harder to react to overheads. That's literally all. Is if someone has one overhead, you can watch for a single animation. For example, like, uh, uh, I don't know, Dudley towards Ren House. That one's pretty hard to react to, so that's a bad example. Akuma towards strong. Akuma actually has another ra overhead in his close run house, but whatever. But if you're fighting, like, you can see this with Yurian. Yurian will get the mirror on you, and sometimes he'll do, like, stand run house. Sometimes he'll do, like, towards fierce. Sometimes he'll do, like, universal overhead. Like, by mixing it up between those three, you can't watch for a single animation. Necro's two overheads do the same thing. So it just makes them just a little bit more effective. You can, it's hard to have, it's hard to react to two different animations and like recognize them both as overheads. And then you see shit like whiff stand jab into low short just to make people like, you know, 
get lit up by, oh shit, he's doing something weird block high. You see stuff like that a lot in this game, actually. Mostly from Yurian, to be honest. Yurian's like the one character who gets like a really, really solid, just like, ooh. Mix up. A, a situation where the opponent just has to sit and block and respect for a minute. I mean, Yun does too with Gane, but uh, he can't come off an overhead, thankfully. Well, he can, but it's like really, really precise. You need a well-spaced universal overhead. On a crouching opponent. Yun's more about his command grab or low mix-up. Overhead not necessary. This is that good aura from earlier. I spotted his play style. This, this mix-up is tricky. No, no, that wasn't... <gasps> Yo. <laughs> I've never actually seen anyone do that, but I've thought about it a long time ago. So it was just crouch fierce, and then he walked back really far, and then... That's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. I'm stealing that. So that was a super knockdown. So there's no... There's no way to quick stand here. And that's just unblockable. That's it. That's unblockable. And now... Oh, he's doing the Kroto setup again. He actually walked into it. That was kind of weird. It's because he didn't... Yurim wasn't in the right place. Because he whiffed his jump forward. That setup is notable because it works whether the opponent quick stands or not. No, I've already learned that setup now. I just need to see it once. That's some neat shit. That only works on people you can cross up in the corner, though. So that's, like, not a broken setup. That's only about half the cast. But that's a good way of getting... It's it's kind of a lot of bar. It's like a meter and a half to do that. But it's, um... It's a good way of getting the opponent mid-screen in the right place that you can start. You can turn, like, a corner setup into a mid-screen setup, which is important for his infinite. But it's only really good if you have like a, a, a shit ton of meter. He got all his taunts up. Hugo actually has four taunts. Four taunt Hugo has a lot of fucking health. It's the same taunt as Q but shittier. It raises his defense. But you can do four of them. But even four taunt Hugo does not have as much health as three taunt Q. But like it's still really good. Meter is really hard to build for Aura in this matchup because Chicken Combo doesn't work and like Hugo's actually pretty good in neutral. So like and like meter is really busted. Like you can just freely win if you have super meter. A uh, super meter basically guarantees Hugo's gonna take some damage and get put in the corner. And if the if Hugo's cornered, a super meter basically guarantees he's gonna eat an unblockable. So um meter is really, really busted for Aura. But it's really hard to build. But now he's got a, like a shit ton of meter. Eat. That beat uh, shoot down backpacker, which has a pretty shitty hitbox, to be honest. Here we go. Tries to jump over it. Oh, fuck. He still has dragon potential. Or miscounted. That's an unblockable. He did the Crota setup again. Not the Crota setup, but like the Crota ender. Q is 2100 and Hugo is uh, around 2000. It's pretty close. For for comparison, um, Ryu is 1200. Q with default health is 1200. Hugo with default health is 1400. He did the poison taunt! The poison taunt does absolutely nothing. It's just cool. He did the Kroto setup again. He fucked it up a little bit, but it didn't matter. Did the Kroto setup again. Again, fucked up a little bit. It would have been stun if he didn't fuck it up in either one of those times. Hugo's one of those characters where it doesn't matter if you fuck it up. Did it again, got it that time. And he did it again and got it. Good old Chun Li. Good old Ryu. Our favorite. This matchup is nice and pure.
This is a super deadly scenario. Yep, guessed wrong on the parry timing. People tend to do the earliest possible parry. Very few people tend to ever do the late parry. It's either earliest possible parry or hold up. Which is honestly a lot better than, you know. Late parry doesn't really do anything the hold up forward doesn't do. That was the early release, but he mistimed it. The thing is that engine, not only not only having a different number of hits, it actually moves at different speeds depending on how much charge you have, which can occasionally fuck you up if you're not point blank. Denjin's a damn good super. Kuroda famously went on record and said he thinks it's the best super in the game, which is pretty nutty. I would be between that. I would be between Gene. Nice. Lina definitely should have been paying there. Um, I would be between Gene and, and Aegis. But Dungeon's pretty good, don't get me wrong. For a long fucking time before Kuroda said that, people generally regarded Dungeon to be gimmicky. A lot of people didn't really respect the mix-up. A lot of people were just like, oh, like, you know, you can just, like... You can... Dungeon just lets you randomly cheese out wins. When you, like, should have lost. It was generally seen to be about as good as Super 2 and Super 1 for, like, years and years. And then uh, Kuroda went on record and said he thought it was the best super in the game. And then, like, the fucking Denjin Defense 4 showed up. They were like, yo, Denjin is amazing. It is amazing, don't get me wrong. I think it's I think it's pretty clearly Ryu's best super. I think it's probably... Most people would probably say 3-1-2. I think I would probably say 3-2-1. But that's like a pretty unpopular opinion. A lot of people say one is his best super. One doesn't really do anything. It's okay. It lets you combo off of stand medium kick into like medium stand medium kick super and it lets you do low short low jab low short super, which only works with super one. But the main thing about super one is it just gives you a lot of BX moves and Ruzi X is pretty good. EX fireballs are really strong. EX DP gives you a wake up, I guess. EX donkey kick is one of the best EX moves in the whole game. You gotta choose. It's not like... EX Fireball's still really good. I don't think it's bad. That was kind of a weird decision. That was good for Necro. That was like the right play there. He should have drilled over Ryu's head. That was the actual right play. But what he did was okay. He had to like land into it and parry. Hitting a bottom was risky. The engine is just so strong for Ryu, if you can find that setup. There aren't that many setups, but it just hurts so badly. You basically, it's very hard to lose a round where you land a uh, Shinshoyu. Well spaced. I think you would have been a Linka super after that. That's a confirm. I didn't know about that TC until like really recently, being a couple of years ago. You get it? Yeah, I love that. I talked about that last video. Super into immediate super as a mid screen combo. <laughs> that shit was pretty hot. So Necro's playing the slow. Necro's okay here. A lot of characters get shut down in footsies by Chun-Li, but Necro actually has some spots where he's better off than Chun-Li is. A lot of characters, like, they lose to Chun-Li on every screen position. It's like up close she's better, far away she's better. But Necro has some ranges where his buttons win. So it's okay. Neat. You can really see that she's kind of struggling. Her damage output is better than his, especially with shit like that. But you can really see that she was kind of struggling to move around freely. Yeah, Chun-Li can reversal. You just don't use those buttons, basically. chun can reversal like super, like a stand for your Sir's Diamond House. Maybe that move too. Low forward. 
I'm not actually sure of that one. But those are the moves that win the day. Like, back strong, uh, stand forward, crouch forward. He could have gotten a down back fierce after that. Those are the moves that help a lot in this matchup. Whew, that's not too bad. Those are all low parries. Which only was fishing. Drill is pretty good too. Suddenly would drop to like like well Kikosho is not that much worse than Super what, two for two. Kikosho does about the same damage for less bar. It's like a little bit less damage for less bar. So Chun Li wouldn't drop, but she would probably go to like high mid. If she had no super at all, she would probably go to like low mid, or maybe even just low. Her neutral relies a lot on the threat of like a very very high damage super. I think it's 22. It's like a lot. <laughs> it's a fuck ton of parries. That's actually relevant too, because the main reason Chun-Li picks Kiko Show is to control uh, jump-in movement. Chun-Li's anti-air is a little bit questionable. But if... Um, if she picks Kiko Show, she can actually anti-air with it pretty well. Which is really notable against Hugo, which is a character she hates constantly jumping in on her. So a lot of Chun-Li's pick uh, Kiko Show against Hugo. It's like the only time you ever see Chun-Li not pick Super 2. The chances of Hugo getting some of the parries are pretty good. It still does full damage just an A tier too. The chances of Hugo getting um, some of the parries are pretty good, but the chances of Hugo successfully parrying out is basically like very, very low. It's quite punishable though. It's more punishable than her Super 2 is. So you've got to be careful about it. And you can still confirm it the same traditional ways. In fact, it actually has more confirms than um, uh, Super 2 does because you've also got the anti-air stuff. Like, you can still do low forward super 1, you can still do uh, stand run house super 1, you can still do back fierce fireball super 1, but then you also have things like air to air stomp into super 1 and stuff like that. There's some shenanigans with it. If Chun Li's super 2 is like a 10 out of 10 super, Chun Li's Kiko show is probably like a 7 out of 10 super. It's not bad. It's just like outclassed. Generally. Tell these alright. He's not like a... It depends. Some characters have a lot of trouble with his neutral. I think uh, Necro has a lot of trouble with his neutral. The low jump is kind of annoying, and the advancing towards medium kick is pretty annoying. A lot of characters don't really have good stuff about that. And the advancing towards strong, too. He kind of pokes a lot of characters. If they don't have like good normals, he can kind of light them up. Good close-range normals. It's not that bad, though. I think the neutral is Mika? No. I'm the wrong person to ask. That was a red parry a second hit. That was kind of tight. That doesn't even do anything against Dudley. Just gave him a bigger punish. Like, that doesn't... He could have... Instead of doing that, he could have just done two high parries. And it would have done exactly the fucking same thing. Honestly, he could have done one high parry into, like, punish. And it would have done the same thing. Like, he's still just as free to low. That's the reason you don't see shit like that very often. It's, like, really hard, and it's not particularly better most of the time. Against, like, Ken, it's okay to do one parry, or one block into parry. High parry. Because it's, like, either he does low, short, low jab, and I block the first hit, and then forward parry the second. Or he does, like, TC, and I block the first hit, forward parry the second. Or he does overhead, and I block the first hit, and forward parry the second. You forward parry the second hit of all of those. He's just got to get the initial blocking direction right. But like the thing about Dudley is that his low confirm is low short low short, so you've got to block both of those low. So that high parry would have just got lit up if it was low short. This is punishable, he's done.
Don't get grabbed. He's the Mika player. He said winning the neutral as Mika. I don't think doing whatever you can to get the grab is actually the play is Mika. I think the play is to get in and mesh in strong. And then confirm into your clapper your your stand hard punch shooting peach or stuff like that. That is a shit ton of damage for a meteor lift combo. That works on, I think, everyone in the corner, but his starter matters. Like, as some characters, against some characters, can can do TC into double uppercut in the corner. Ryu might be one of them. But on some characters, he can. And then he can do it mid screen with uh, the Kara, but then again, the starter matters. Like, after a low forward, you can do double light DP on most characters, almost everyone. But after, like, a TC, there are a lot of characters it doesn't work on. Notably, against Q, you can do double light DP off of a lot of starters. Um, always. Yeah, I'm going to second cry. Jump in from outside flash kick range and then do down strong. Try to bait the flash kick like that. And then towards fierce it. Use jump down strong from far away to get over Hadoukens. Or excuse me, uh, Sonic Booms. That was another block into Red Parry. Mika's still okay against Gal. I don't mean okay, okay. I think she loses. I think it's like 6-4. Maybe worse. I think it's like 6-4. Ouch. The thing about that is that that parry window was really, really small. The initial parry was really crazy hard to get there because the super freeze ate up whatever parry he might have been going for. And then he had to parry post freeze, which was a very, very tiny window. Look at this matchup. You don't see this one almost at all. Alex is tall, so if you're anti air parrying, you generally have to parry twice against Lena. Lena has um, three. She's got like two air TCs plus a two hit jump roundhouse. All of these things make life hard. Let's her get like high damage jumping combos, and also let's her confirm whatever she wants on the ground. Neat. The sliding under brooms that good. I was never afraid of that as a gal. Oh, what the fuck? That DP was probably an accident. What the fuck was that? That was an EX slash elbow. But that was like a really, really horrible time to pull it out. The Buki Gal is like 5 5, to be honest. That's like a pretty fair matchup. Oh, that jump. 
He was caught off guard by Elena's wake up. Elena's, like when she's jumping, she's kind of narrow. Yes, I did see. If you're talking about fucking final round. No, CEO, right? He played almost nothing like the way you were playing. But that's okay, because every Firestorm plays completely differently from me. I got fucking excited for that first match. I forget who it was. Was it Aquaman? No, it was Batman. Scarecrow versus Batman, just like fucking... What was his name? Emperor Theo? No, who was it? What's his name? Uh... What's the, what's the Batman? Forever King, right? It's Forever King, I think. Nice punish. Pretty much perfect, actually. Can't even bash. Can't even bash that perfect punish. Crouch strong, DP. Strongest meterless thing she has. And then super. Wow, well, I did it again. Um... Forever King played like so like perfectly scummy. The whole fucking time I had my fucking butt clenched so hard. I was like, could Scarecrow really do this? It was so close. He looked so helpless far away. And then he was like playing for his life whenever he got in. That was like a really intense match. So it's like the most That's the most intense like fighting game match I've seen in like a year. I was on the edge of my seat. It's probably the highlight of the entire CEO for me. That one fucking set. And then Scarecrow clutched it out. It's designed to like make it really... It's it's just designed... There's a lot of moves like that, even in Injustice, but in other fighting games. It's just like, they want to make it so... He corners himself... He's really good, but he corners himself really fast. But the thing they didn't really consider about Matman is that he's actually like decent at escaping the corner. Like, pretty good at escaping the corner. For the main reason being that um, you can release mechanical bats and jump forward at the same time, and it covers your jump. So you can use that to, like, jump over the opponent. Like, if you want to look at that, but better, you can see um, Green Arrow. I don't know about Injustice 2 so much, but Injustice 1 Green Arrow is a very good example of a character with some really good, like, like retreating moves, but then like poor ability to uh, escape the corner. Batman's trade is kind of busted, yeah. It's kind of a different but design philosophy than Dalsim, even though you're still trying to corner Dalsim. I guess it's more like Guile. It's really easy to play a defensive Guile if you don't give a fuck about screen position. But then Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5 Guile, once you get cornered, it's kind of hard to actually find the certain things that allow you to escape. The only thing that truly guarantees your escape in Street Fighter 5 is like a fucking crush counter sweep into V-Trigger. <laughs> The only thing that truly allows you to escape in Street Fighter 4, guaranteed, with no like counter pressure, is like a flash kick FADC on hit. But I think the number of bats doesn't matter almost at all. Almost always it's going to be one bat. And one bat enables you to do most of the bullshit stuff that Batman can do. I still don't think it's that. I don't think it's as strong as, um, what's his face? Atrocitus. But at least Atrocitus gets it a lot more rarely and has to use it a bunch of times in a row. Oh, just to combo off of. Oh, I didn't know that. There you go. Never mind.
That's a nice red. Atrocitus trait combos are pretty neat. I'm gonna be honest. They're like they might be broken, but they're really interesting. So I'm kind of willing to forgive them being broken a little bit. Just because there's so much tactics involved with them. Yeah, I know what you mean. So that empty cancel low forward. Dash out, dash in. Shota dash is so fast. I think that low forward, he was looking for the low parry. And he just did it anyway. Another empty cancel low forward. Neat. I'm pretty sure Ken can just duck to get out of that. I don't know if there's a force stand frame in this game. But Ken can duck a Tatsu. Pretty sure he could have just held down. He was like parrying or just, I don't know. Aquaman is a legacy character. And also he just got a lot of buffs in general. Or rather he didn't mind too much about the, the mechanical changes. His one bar stuff is pretty good. But legacy characters are just going to do really well right now because everyone knows how to play them. It's going to be a while before we really see, like, even though Poison Ivy has, like, a good tool set, it's going to be a while before we see a Poison Ivy doing super, super well. I don't know who the really strong new characters are supposed to be. I think Poison Ivy is supposed to be pretty good. Ah, yes, Deadshot. Deadshot doesn't count because he's so fucking simple. Atrocitus is a good example, I guess. He's already doing pretty well, but he'll probably be doing really fucking well. Once the game's been out a while. But all the legacy characters are just really strong right now. Granted, the legacy characters probably have the best balance, and by best balance I mean, you know, not underpowered. Like, most of the legacy characters, they have a pretty good idea of how they're supposed to fight each other. The only legacy character I haven't really seen that much of is Green Arrow, which is understandable because he didn't really have that many players in, um... No, not Green... Well, yeah, Green Arrow. But Green Lantern, too, now that I think about it. Green Lantern actually had a lot of players in Injustice 1, and now he's kind of, like, unplayed. His... He got a lot of... His, his damage is really shitty in this new game. Even with, like, the strongest combos I can think of, I struggle to break 400. But Green Lantern got a lot of buffs to his neutral. Like, the, the Lantern Bomb is really fucking good. Got the double. That shit's hard. Very few Kens can get that at all. The new fireball is okay. I think it doesn't fire down when you're doing it now, so it's less like an Akuma fireball and more like a... Uh, does anyone have a fireball that goes straight across the screen from like the air in Street Fighter? I can't think of anything. More like a Firestorm or a fireball. Oh, wait, does that exist? No. I feel like um, there's a character with that, though. Oh, Melina was the character I was thinking of. Melina Airsai. More like a Melina Airsai. Neat. That low strong. Yeah, dead shot. But like the the air fireball is probably a little bit worse, but the bomb is really really good. And there's another thing, the rolling thing. That's like kind of it looks kind of bad to me, but it'll probably be all right. It looks like it'll help you win fireball wars. 
It's just uh, what's his face, Tremor's fireball or one of his fireballs. This damage is really, really good for a fireball, and also it's a low. Both of those are really notable features. Yes! Yes! That was tight! So moves that reset in third strike no longer reset if the opponent gets dizzy midair. So all moves have an inherent juggle point system. Usually one for most grounded normals, but it really depends on the character in the normal. Um, and like normally that doesn't matter that much. But if you get the stun midair, this is like a free juggle state, I think, after this um, super. If the super knocks down, I think it's free juggle state. So that's one, two, three, four, five. He might have been able to get more there. I don't know if those are all one. It might have been, it might be this uh, JP1 after the super. So it might be like two, three, four, five, six there. Necro's got certain setups where you can do some really fun stuff. Uh, if you stun with a forward throw, that's a uh, JP zero or whatever. Almost all launchers are JP one. Supers often reset the juggle points though, so most supers that knock down are um, n n like free juggle states. Free juggle state isn't really a thing in this game. Almost every juggle state is a free juggle state. What I meant to say is just JP0. He hasn't used any of his struggle points yet. Neat. That was a really good counter poke. That parry. Necro's trying to play really, really passive. You can see it. He's trying not to do any moves that can hang him. Dully was in like hyper parry mode. That like whole end game looked kind of strange, but like from a third strike perspective, as a third strike player, like it was very ordinary looking to me. But like look at it again. Literally from this point onward, like Dudley has to play a very strange way in order to be ready for whatever parry comes his way. Some parries hit midair, some don't. It depends. Necros is kind of picky about hitting as an A tier. It has like hits where it's on the ground and then hits where it's kind of jumping. That's generally safe. And Dudley's generally bad at punishing things like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if um, that was just unpunishable. That was probably punishable. That was like a medium punch thing from what I could tell. Thought they might have been able to super that or something. I don't know. Fuck. Through too soon. Oh. <laughs> if that was super, he would have won. He didn't He didn't react. It was a, cr it was a cross counter. It's kind of a strange thing. That was sick. That was sick. That was some perfect timing. Unfortunately, the startup of Necro's moves is pretty long. So if you just get into the mode of I'm going to like... Like, what was he really afraid of there? Let's be real. He was probably afraid of low forward and nothing else. So it's like, if you get into that mindset, it's like, Necro could hit me with low forward or nothing from where I am. It's just like, well, I'm going to wait for him to do fucking anything at all, and then I'm going to hit low parry. And hopefully it's a low forward and I can punish it. That was a nice punish. That was actually really hot. Is that a low strong into super or what? And anyway, if you're not trying to react to what something is, if you're purely trying to react to something happening then it's really easy to react. Your reaction time goes way down. Like, people can... If they're trying to... Ooh, neat. I'm really, really surprised that he parried the correct number of times there. That was some crazy good game knowledge. Time out. I want to see that again. I don't know, I've, like, played this the beginning of this match, like, so many times. The parry and punish was really hot there. So, Dudley can get air to air connects and then do ducking super. And that's the only follow-up he has. He can't do ducking straight here because it's an air reset, and the only way to combat a air resets is a super. So you can just always parry here. There's literally no downside in case Dudley does the ducking super, which is what the Necro does. He's good awareness of the game. Um, so there's the ducking. It wasn't even a ducking super. It's just a regular super. Um, this super is not going to get its full 
five hits, even if it's like the hard super. It's a five hit super. Uh, Necro in this freeze reacts to how far away he is, and then reacts to the number of parries he's going to have to do based on this range. And he's already done a parry probably by this point. Just OS, OS parry here because it's literally no downside play because that's the only thing Dudley can do to you right now is like make you eat a super. So he does four parries. And then he doesn't do five because he knew that he wouldn't need five from that range. And then he just punishes it. That was really cool. Probably safe. Maybe not. That was a punish. Half of Dudley's Super 3's damage is in the first hit. So if he loses the first hit, he literally loses half the damage of the Super, which is what happened right there. Otherwise, that would have killed, I think. Ideal execution barrier. I feel like an execution an execution barrier almost shouldn't even be a thing. I feel like there should be like shitty things that are just completely easy to do. A pretty good example of a game doing that. I don't think it's like super creative or anything, but a decent example of a game doing that is KOF 14 with the repeated jabs having a unique TC. That was like a super, super good set. The little match right there. Is this Ryu? This is a classic. This is a classic. They're both Denjin too. You guys are probably wondering whether Denjin can counter Denjin, and the short answer is no. Do not ever try that. What the fuck? Hold on, time out. I want to see that again. Play it back. That was weird. Got hit by only one hit the first time. Then fell into the second one. I mean, there's a difference. There's a difference between... I guess not. I read this, like, execution barrier, like, for a beginner. Like, how, how, how much you have to be able to do to even begin to play the game. How useful things are and how hard they are should be aligned, approximately. I think everyone agrees with that. That's a fairly easy way to put, like, skill into a fighting game. If someone, like, killed me... If someone killed me with, like, like... I don't know. If someone killed me, like, they blocked the first hit of my stand strong as Hugo, and then they red parried the second hit on reaction, and then super won my recovery, I wouldn't even be mad. I'd be like, wow, you really earned that. You know what I mean? I don't even want to win after a point if the opponent does something that skillful. I guess I can watch that. Hit me with the link, but it probably won't be next. It may not even be soon. People are generally okay with things as long as the things are hard to do. Strong things, is what I should say. Most people are like, oh, that was a card even off towards strong. That's um, pretty hot. Don't like the jump in. The jump in invited too much danger. He was better off just chilling at full screen. <gasps> Ooh. He needed that to connect because it would have given him a nice knockdown to get Denjin mix up. Forte is not hard, but Run Stop Fierce is one of the hardest things in 4. And Run Stop Fierce helped Forte a lot. But most of the other stuff Forte had was pretty easy. Um, KCD Bomb can be hard depending on your setup. It like helped Forte quite a lot to be holding hard kick during other stuff. So if you're not used to that, that could make things really hard for you. Okay, so the is a pretty good move. Forte ended up being one of the hardest characters in the game. Because of Run Stop Fierce. But like everything, most of the other stuff Forte has is like, you know. Not that bad. It's he's more of a decision making kind of character. He's more of a hard read kind of character. There's nothing tricky about doing a fucking quesadilla or what do you call it? Uh propeller tortilla. Or doing a fucking tostada press on either side. That's easy as fuck.
Gen is simultaneously way easier than people mention, and also way harder than people mention. Most people aren't really super, like, knowledgeable on the things that make Gen really, like, bullshit hard. He certainly has a lot of fucking hard features. I struggle a lot with, like, Hanes, Perfect Hanes, and you need Perfect Hanes a lot with Gen. I think Hard Hanes is Gen's only 3 from attack. So if you want to get, like, fucking a big punish on, like, a change of direction or something like that, on minus 3 attack, you've got to do, like, reversal Hard Hanes and then, like, an FADC combo from there, which can be pretty fucking hard. Is the AFG a fighting game defined more by its entry level mechanics or f and feel or its high level ones? That's a really hard question to answer. How entertaining a fighting game is is often based on its high level mechanics because it'll be like, you know, um, it'll be like players of a high caliber playing and that'll determine the entertainingness, entertainment level. But you have to remember that about 99.9% .9 of all players of any fighting game are going to be the garbage guys. I bet literally 99% of Street Fighter 5 players are super silver or below. And it's really, it genuinely is kind of more important that they're having fun. It'd be nice if both of them were perfect. Street Fighter 5 is an example of a game that's kind of good for a beginner but not very exciting from a high level play. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. It probably is like 99% Super Silver below. Okay. There you go. I was pretty close. It was 98%. Ultra Silver and below. Or 98%. I'm not even counting those people. I may be counting those people a little bit. People, we have a different idea. Like, if you're a player of, like, if you're a big player of fighting games, like I am, um, my idea of not playing Street Fighter much is playing it, like, once a week. I don't play Street Fighter much. I play it, like, once a week. But, like, like, there are people who, like, make a periodic attempt to, like, play it, like, once every couple months. You know? There are people who play it a lot less than I do. And then I'm sure there's a bunch of people in this very chat who play a fighting game every day. I probably play, like, not even five hours of Street Fighter V every week. And that's been true since launch. I like have no business even being remotely as, as good as I am with the amount of practice I put in. But it's just because I'm carrying a lot of skill from previous fighting games. And of course it hurts me because I'm not that good. I'm better than like most people, but I'm not like anywhere near as good as I want to be. I always thought that white thing in Dudley's little portrait was his glove, but Dudley has blue gloves, and now I'm like 99% sure that, that that white thing is a teacup, and he's holding a teacup in his fucking little portrait, because you can see the blue around it, which is the color of his gloves. I don't even understand why he would be holding a teacup in while wearing his glove in the first place. Something like SF5 with footsies. I don't actually think the footsies of SF5 are that much worse than Street Fighter 4. There are things that it's better, and things that it's worse. I think the footsies... Obviously the combos were affected a lot. You never see that TC in this game. Never version of tackle knocks down in this game, so... That's kind of funny. 
で次のマッケンナーゲール、BBC。Yeah, definitely the loss of Pokes hurt it a lot. I feel like so many people have said that now. Where's Capcom? Do they just not want to change the game that much in the fear of losing even more people? Pairing that is not, doesn't render it punishable. It's both. It's definitely both. It is a mental sport, it's a fucking performance sport. Why is he pairing that? It's free meter, I guess. Huh? That was a weird thing to go into. Crash first doesn't cancel, or rather it only cancels on its first hit. So the thing he probably should have gone for there was like a tackle onto super, which is maybe what he meant to do. I'm guessing what he wanted was a uh, tackle, which he missed, because he was still in like, you know, the animation. And then he tried to do super and accidentally got a hard fireball. He kind of was playing like Street Fighter Five Urian, to be honest. That's like a weird thing. When Street Fighter, I played Street Fighter 3 for years, and then Street Fighter 4 came out, and all of a sudden there were an influx of players who were like playing Street Fighter 4 Ryu and Street Fighter 3, which is not that bad. But it's worse than like playing Street Fighter 5 Ryu and Street Fighter 4 style, or like something like that. Whoa. 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 My chat. Come back. Are we losing frames? I haven't dropped a single frame. I would like to see some changes on the level of like second impact to third strike for Street Fighter V. I want an overhaul. I want Vanilla to Super, but more so. Don't forget Vanilla to Super was some pretty fucking, you know, that was kind of a big deal. Like that was 10 new characters and significant like mechanic changes. Let's punish. He didn't have super. I think he thought he would build it. I have no idea. This is Tommy. It might be. We'll know as soon as he gets a command grab. Oro needs very, very little translation in order to fit in Street Fighter V, to be 100% honest. He already plays like a Street Fighter V character. Stones will be his fucking retrigger. His super will probably be a fucking firewall. Maybe the sun. Well, I'll probably give him two supers, to be honest. Skill, I got no fucking clue. Falls asleep. Recovers HP. No, that would actually be good, okay? He falls asleep, it does absolutely nothing, but it builds V-Trigger meter at an alarming rate. It's just like the like the super meter charging moves in like uh uh the Dark Suckers characters in uh uh like like Felicia's little supercharge move in uh Marvel Three. It'll be like that. Except it builds V meter. All the time he's asleep he's building V meter. So you can drop combos early just to get the build. I would actually kind of like that. <laughs> okay, what's going on here? This one's spaghetti for sure. Thank egg. Oh, it's the guy bowing, I see now. Just add grooves, dude. That's it. Just add grooves. Add a Street Fighter 3 groove, Street Fighter 4 groove, Street Fighter 5 groove. Done. I just fixed the game. 
I just made it the greatest fighting game of all time. Street Fighter 4 Groove has um, no input buffer and FADCs. Street Fighter 3 Groove has a parry. Street Fighter 4 actually had way worse fucking anti airs than Street Fighter 5 does. Initially. But then the most requested change every single fucking balance patch was give my character better anti airs. So, like, anti airs just kind of slowly appeared over the five rebalances. There was a lot more bullshit to deal with in Street Fighter 4 with the jump-ins too. Like there's nothing on the level of Rufus Dive Kick in all of Street Fighter 5 and there probably never will be. Closest thing is Akuma's Air Fireball which is pretty good but not that good. Jump jab. She had to parry at different times there, depending on what she was expecting a early Ken stand fierce or a late Ken stand strong, or even a low. Ken could have made her land on the low forward too. And she couldn't have done axe kick. She could have done axe kick to just not land for a while, but that would have made it so stand fierce or stand strong would have been a punish. It was a bad scenario. Jumping over the opponent was not the correct play there for Makoto. Oh my god. Oh no. Fuck it, dude. One of the grooves will just be fucking Vism. It'll be a groove. Put custom combos in SF5. Is this real? We got a fucking Ken versus 12. Next copy? Feng Shui is a rich man's gonna age and it just wears off after a combo and a half. It's not really any worse besides that. It's slightly worse besides that. The fact that the chains take so much of your fucking feng shui meter is really what kills it. I think they could have just ha let her have the chains and then just um, make the, what do you call it, the uh, uh, Fuhai Ren Kyaku, just make that take a, a bunch of your V meter. I mean, the chains don't lead to anything except, like, just sweep knockdowns and Fuhai Ren Kyaku. So you still would have been using, like, big chunks. But it'd be nice if you could just do stand forward, like, two hit sweep. Or, like, uh, you know, low short, low short, low forward, low roundhouse. Stuff like that. It'd be nice if she had more play with stuff like that without just instantly losing all her meter. Yeah, losing the overhead was kind of bad, too. I mean, she still has the overhead, but losing the overhead combo. Neat! 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 I talk about that combo all the time, but we finally saw it. I feel like this never ever happens, but I frequently bring it up. I bring it up whenever I see a Ken miss it when it could have killed. But it actually does kill here. That gets two hits. If the two hits kill, it's the right play. It's a lot easier than double DP. Sometimes double DP is not available, but that is always available. A spot dodge in SF5. I've never heard anyone suggest that. 
But that's a really cool idea that I want to think about a little bit. Spot dodge like KOF, KOF extra, extra mode or whatever. I remember negative edge ultra. It's like fireball charge and then hold all three kicks and then new quarter circle, quarter circle, release all three kicks, something like that. And then gives you the ultra when it would normally give you a uh, fireball release. KF rolls. That's an idea. That's like a real idea. Dude, give 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 SF five two layers. Make it so you can go into the foreground and background. And then make certain sweeping attacks hit both. I want a two point five D fighting game. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. What a what an uppercut. He might have been doing that just to build meter. So Ken's super... This is a fireball, so it's gonna trade. Because you can't... Like, you can counter hit most attacks with super because super has a fuck ton of priority. But a fireball is gonna trade. So this Ken knows that he's not gonna eat this full super or anything like that. Ken can't really super through fireballs. That's not really a thing. Um... And then he like combos out of the EX fireball with <laughs> light DP. Ken's uh the first set of Ken's super has like a big suction effect. That was really strange. I don't blame Capcom for making costumes, but I do blame them for not doing other shit. I don't understand how they have all this free time to make costumes, but they're not fucking fixing the game. But like, you know, the costumes are pretty cool to be honest. I'm not buying them at any of them, but I like I like seeing them. It's a fairly harmless way to add value to the game without like, you know. It's a good way for them to make money without like uh doing anything really objectionable. Like fucking DLC gems or whatever. Yeah, I know it's different people. I got money for one, but not the other. Uh, costumes, I think, don't actually cost that much to do. The thing about Capcom that's just so surprising about all this is that, like, it's not really surprising, but, like, we all really want every literally everyone wants Street Fighter V to be a good game. And a lot of people are kind of forcing through in the hope that Capcom is gonna pull through. A lot of people are playing it when they kind of like don't like it just because they think it'll be fixed at some point in the future. Like it's made me realize just how fucking strong the Capcom like fan base is. Especially the Street Fighter fan base. I think MVCI is a pretty clear example of that fading, actually. People are a lot more suspicious now. Yeah, Street Fighter Five would have died a long ago if it wasn't Capcom. Oh, that was the end of it. That was the end of that tournament. It was pretty long. This one's got the same weird layout. Neither of these are East versus West Wars. This says uh, GW Ron Dom P12. 
I don't feel like watching another tournament of this layout. Let's watch an East versus West. This one's all narrow and shit. Let me change the layout. Switch looks a little jittery, damn it. Not again. It's not that bad to watch, but I wish it wasn't like this. Let's keep trying, baby. Oh, it's jittery too. Really jittery. Let's see if it fixes when the names go on. I don't really believe the meme that um, uh, Capcom characters look deliberately bad to make Marvel characters look better. That sounds like trash. Sounds like some made up bullshit. But I do believe the meme that uh, Marvel is being a stick in the mud about uh, uh, DLC about X X Men characters because they don't want to they want to ruin their own cap their own X Men brand. I believe that meme. It still looks a bit shitty. Marvel is literally like the best I IP. I kind of thought that would trade, and then it did trade. Big ol' hitbox. What about this one? Give me some fucking good clean footage. This looks good. Wait. 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 Yeah, this looks nice and clean. Yeah, look at that. Look at the frame rate. Yeah, they're moving perfectly. Murumuru versus Samurai. Oh, bad hit confirmed. That's punishable. That was a pretty good punish. Ah, uh, I think that was punishable. That was light tattoo. Light tattoo is always unsafe. Even if you lock it. Yuri could have done Sin Strong or something there. I think that's about right, Andy boy. The other, like, really traditional 2D fighters are not, like, they're all very indie. Uh, most fighting games nowadays are, like, the. You got the 3D fighters with KOF and, I mean, like, with Tekken and uh, Soul Calibur, I suppose. And then also DOA, potentially, and Virtual Fighter, although I think those ones haven't had new games in forever. And then you got your, like, your fucking, your crazy team games in Marvel, and uh, you got your anime fighters in Guilty Gear Blast Blue, uh, a lot of the little stuff on, like, the random games, like the Uniel and the, uh, what's the other one? A lot of random anime games. And then you got your Smash. I think the Gara 2 will probably come out really soon from all the news I've been seeing. I think that's a real thing that's probably happening. It's probably already in production. But like, what is there besides KF and Street Fighter doing that kind of that kind of fighting game? I 
Gara was kind of a KOF clone. It might actually be more accurate to say KOF is a Garo clone. There's some significant mechanical differences. Gara was 1v1. Garo is a game in the Fatal Fury series, which I think is older than KOF. The taunt! As <laughs> a round start, taunt. Hmm. That's a nicely placed mirror right there. Yeah, he got a lot of damage on that mirror. Dolphin MVC2? Huh? MVC2 was never on GameCube. Or we. Alright, confirmation that Fatal Fury is older than KOF. There were a lot of fighting game series that kind of, KOF just kind of ate all of them. There was that one, the Fatal Fury series, which is what Terry's from. There was the Art of Fighting series, which is what, uh, um, uh, Rio and Robert were from. There was, I think there was another really big one. There were like three fighting game series that KOF just ate all of. I do not work tonight. I am free. We can hang out. Samurai Shodan, I think, went alongside um, Kira for a pretty long time. And also, there's very few characters in Samurai Shodown who made it to KOF. I think it's literally supposed to be a different universe. So, um, I would say those two kind of coexisted in a way. Technically speaking, a bunch of the uh, Samurai Shodown characters snuck into uh, CBS. I don't know about a bunch, but like a uh, a decent number. Nakaru was in that game, wasn't she? And then I think Hibiki. Was it Hibiki? Was she a Samurai Shodown character? I don't even know if she is. She just looks like one. Last Blade. Hmm. I think there were other characters in from Samurai Shodown. I think there was at least two, possibly three. But I can't think of who. Who's the fencer bitch from Samurai Shodown? Charlotte? I like her. Hamaru, that's it. Yeah, him. He's the samurai, right? Dude, the conversation between Nakaruru and, um, what's her face? Zafina? Z Zarina? Fucking let you can, lady. Let you can has arrived, the character. That jump in combo was so shit. 
He was not prepared to be jumping over a fireball. This is some really, really, really good Remy zoning. Remy is quite strong against Yurian. This is probably a Remy's advantage matchup, despite the fact that Remy's a lower tier character than Yurian. Gee, this is like the slowest double perfect I've ever seen in my life. I've seen some very slow double perfect. Oh my god! <laughs> dash, dash, cold blue kick. That has unthrowable frames. Remy's zoning is really, really awful if you can't duck his fireballs. Especially if your movement is kind of stiff, and Yurian's movement is very stiff. Yu is a good Remy. Or perhaps Yo, if you're pronouncing it like a Japanese. I don't give a fuck about Samurai Showdown series. I've never played any of them. I played Garo a little bit and it was tight. More Garo, please. Garo is... Okay, so... Street Fighter came out, and then... SNK... started making the KOF games. And... Capcom saw the KOF games, and they were like, KOF's kind of cool, they've got some kind of quirky stuff. And they made Street Fighter 3 as a semi-evolution of Street Fighter 2, and a semi-response to the KOF games. It's kind of a way to make Street Fighter more modern, more rushdown oriented, more movement based. Street Fighter 3 is kind of a response to this to the KOF series. Ooh, that combo. And uh Garo is kind of a response to Street Fighter 3. It's like SNK's answer to like the the KOF style game that Capcom made, if that makes any sense at all. Brian? You mean Ryan? Kevin Ryan? He is stupid. Balance in general in Garo is a bit questionable, and the high-level play is also a bit questionable. Street Fighter 3 is pretty good about the fact that high-level play is mostly just like every tool of a character being used relatively perfectly. There are a lot of tools, not like a whole lot, but like a decent number, where like there's like a decent number of examples of, um, uh, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, uh, there's a decent number of examples of tools that don't get used at all in high level play, but, you know, they're all kind of notable, because most characters, like, Duck Dudley does ducking straight in certain scenarios, he does ducking up or in certain scenarios, he does short sing blow sometimes, he does fucking uppercut sometimes, he does machine gun blow sometimes, the only thing he doesn't really use that much in high level play is, like, cross counter. And he uses, like, most of his normals in certain scenarios for those normals, you know what I mean? The thing about Garo is when you see, like, high-level Garo, a lot of characters, like, have entire tools they just don't use at all. You just see a hyper-optimized version of that character's playstyle where it's just, like, very few things they actually do. Kane is one of the characters who's the most interesting to me in Garo. When I tried to play Garo, I, the only character I really thought was kind of cool was, um... I mean, I think most of the characters are kind of cool. But the one that kind of meshed with me was Freeman. But I think he's literally considered to be bottom tier on like every tier list. His moves are kind of committal. But I thought Freeman was really cool. I don't even remember why I liked him. I think he had some kind of weird semi reka I think he had some semi Iori things. He certainly looks like Iori. Tall, skinny ass dude with long fucking red hair. Fights with his claws. There's definitely some kind of dank Iori reference in there somewhere. Iori is like top 5 fighting game characters for me, in terms of design. Iori's design is damn near perfect. Gameplay and visual. And personality too. 
That's it. Yori might be top one. Yori might actually be my favorite fighting game character. Bit awkward movement on the Soros part. Name is still the same as the fucking Dudley player. Yori is pronounced Japanese style. It is a Japanese name, I suppose. I've never fucking heard it. I don't know if it's a real name or just like a like a name based on an, an actual real name or something like that. The epitome of fighting game gameplay. Who are the most gameplay-ish fighting game characters? I don't know, I'd probably just pick five archetypes and then say the best character, in my opinion, of those archetypes. I think Guile has probably the best gameplay design of any fighting game character. Street Fighter 2 Guile is pretty good. Street Fighter 5 Guile and Street Fighter 4 Guile are also both pretty good. Guile generally has a very, very smart design. Um, I guess I would loosely answer Zangief, but Zangief's actual, like... Zangief is almost never balanced. I don't think Shoto's are like the epitome of character design, to be honest. I like the fireball DP thing, but that's the only thing about Shoto's I really like. They're not even that easy to play. They are, but they aren't. Oh my god, that all comboed. <laughs> not even Mario from Smash. Koemon. Honda's been had Honda's had shitty balance in almost every game he's ever been in. Honda's like the picture perfect example of terrible game balance. The entire thing that Honda is balanced around is game balance. Honda's consistently I'm good, I'm a walking wall, but I can't do anything about fireballs. Which is really fucking shitty design because it means he's always gonna be strong or weak depending on whether the opponent has a fireball. It's shitty. Damn, power. That's nice. Street Fighter 3 is like a largely, especially with Oro, it's a largely strat based game. So as long as you play with the right strat, that's like the most important thing. There's like very little executional kind of stuff stopping you unless you play Yun or Yurian. I think a lot of, like, this is going to sound like complete and utter heresy, but I think a lot of the problems with Street Fighter fireballs could be solved if the fireballs were either duckable or just went through each other, which is coincidentally actually what um, Injustice 2 did. That being said, I don't think Injustice 2 did a super good job with the fireballs. I mean, it kind of did, but, like, I don't know. It would depend on, movement would affect it a lot, too, and I think the movement in Injustice 2 is pretty awkward. Fireballs are too stalemate by design in Street Fighter. If you make a fireball too strong, it's too easy to just be in a position where both players' best play is to throw a fireball. And then you'll see like eight fireballs in a row from both players just constantly clashing in the middle. I think the game that balanced fireballs the best of any Capcom game is probably Street Fighter 4. I would say they're about right in that game. They had about the right strength. They were quite good. It was worth using fireballs every fireball character. But, like, you could easily play around a fireball. There was no, like, true fireball lockdown. There was only fireball supported lockdown. Really makes you think. Neat. Yeah, it's kind of like, it is kind of bad. Street Fighter 3 did it kind of well. Jump-ins are too strong in Street Fighter. I've always thought that a bit. 
in almost every Street Fighter game, like a single jump in working is so like centralizing. You know what I mean? A single success. Wow, that didn't hit. Neither of them got hit. <laughs> a single successful fireball is so weak. A single successful anti air is pretty weak. But, like, if you eat a jump in combo, that's like half your life. That, like, completely changes the outcome of the match. If you get jumped in on once. And that's true in games where fireballs were good. That's true in Street Fighter 4. There needs to be a good way around fireballs that isn't just like, you know, that doesn't leave them that weak to, to something that game changing. It would be okay if anti airs did more damage, which is how it is in um, a decent number of fighting games. I like that in anime games. Anime games usually do that pretty well. There'll be like a universal anti air in a lot of anime games, and then you can like jump cancel and get like an air combo, and that's both fun to do and makes like anti airs pretty rewarding. I think that's one thing that like Street Fighter would actually benefit immensely from. Anti airing is too stupid a thing in Street Fighter. Like, let me just say that right now. That's something I've always thought about Street Fighter. Anti air is too stupid. Having a single hard counter button to anti airing and like having jump ins be as strong as they are, both of those are really really stupid. Jumping is too stupid. It's too it's too it's too dumb in Street Fighter that like your anti air is something you have to learn. You know what I mean? It's like a different button for every character and like they all work in different ways. That's too specific for beginners. That's like that you like let me say right now that almost always as someone who like helps people learn to play fighting games on a decently regular basis, almost always the problem that every beginner has is jumping too much and not anti airing enough. Okay? Those two things. That's a that's a problem. I think that's a problem. I think it kind of fixes itself once you kind of learn about it a decent amount. Like once you learn once you're fighting people who anti air correctly and once you know how to anti air correctly, I think it's 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 like playable. It's like not a bad system. But it's so stupid, like how non intuitive anti airing is as a concept. The fact that it's not a shared input is not a huge deal, but I do think it's a minor problem. Hold on. This one. Um, there's more to it. I don't know. Analyze this trailer. Take a little look. 